In this video, we're going to discuss tips on how to tile a shower pan, specifically with a penny tile. So this is a little penny tile, it's black, and there's a mesh on the back. So we're going to go over a lot of really great tips and suggestions that will make your project so much easier and better. And we're going to be following tips from the TCNA handbook, the Tile Council of North America handbook. And so most of the time, I say most of the time because sometimes we don't use every single tip, but those are outliers. And in this video, we're going to be discussing all the suggestions that the TCNA has for you. So first and foremost, before we even begin with the tile, the most important thing is to install the shower pan the right way. So in this shower, we used Schluter's new shower tray. Now this is a pre-slope shower tray. The only thing that we needed to make sure of is number one, that our joists were 16 inches on center and that there was three quarter inch plywood underneath. That plywood was flat and level and we bonded the Schluter shower tray per the Schluter handbook. So always make sure you follow the directions of the manufacturer that made the shower tray or shower pan. If you're building your own, obviously try to follow the TCNA handbook. But once the shower pan was installed, the next step was for us to, and by the way, we actually waterproofed the walls before we put the shower tray in, but the next step was to flood test everything and make sure it was waterproof. The second thing that we did was we chose the right bonding material. So in this case, we used Schluter's All Set and we mix that again per Schluter's specifications. So the great thing with Schluter's All Set is that's a thin set mortar that being, can be used to bond the shower pan to the plywood. It can also be used to bond tile to Curdy or Dietra or whatever. So that's the great thing about using Schluter All Set. When you look at mosaics, there's one really specific thing that you need to do. It's not necessarily with the top of the tile, it's with the back. So usually the tiles are bonded to a mesh with some type of adhesive. If, if that adhesive is too thick on the back of the tile, the tile is only bonding to that adhesive and not the thin set mortar. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comments. But this is a really nice example of what you wanna look for. You've got the mesh and you can see the tile through the mesh. There isn't really a ton of adhesive bonding the tile to the mesh. And that really means that the back of this, this mesh and the tile are gonna bond properly to the thin set mortar. So make sure you carefully inspect your mosaic before you buy a ton of it. Another important tip is to choose the right size trowel. So this is a one quarter inch by one quarter inch square notch trowel. And this provided us with the right amount of coverage between our shower pan, our pre-slope shower pan, and the penny mosaic. If you're not sure what size trowel to use, we recommend that you call the thin set manufacturer and ask them what they recommend based on the thin set that you're using and also the size of the tile. Also, I wanted to mention this. This is kind of a bonus tip and that is never, I repeat, never ever use a mastic or a pre-mixed product in a shower pan or in a shower period. Never ever use a mastic. And that again is per our personal experience and also the TCA, TCNA handbook. So never ever use mastic inside a shower. When applying thin set mortar to the shower pan, we use directional troweling. And the reason why is when all of the trowel ridges are facing the same direction, they will compress and air will be released and you'll be left with a really nice bond between the tile, the thin set, in the shower pan. So use directional troweling for bonding the tile to the shower pan and that will provide you with a 95 to 100% coverage that you need for a wet area, in this case a shower. So we always get asked this question, should you install the mosaic onto the shower pan first or should you tile the walls first? Well in this particular instance and for most curved or curbless showers, we like tiling the shower pan first and then the walls. So why is that? Well, when you set any type of tile on a shower pan, you should leave an expansion and contraction joint between the shower pan tile and the wall. And that expansion and contraction joint should be at a minimum one eighth of an inch. And you should do the exact same thing between the mosaic 
and the curb. So along the entire perimeter of the shower, inside the shower pan area, you've got an expansion and contraction joint. That expansion and contraction joint should not have any thin set in it, and you can cover it using the wall tile. So this porcelain tile, which you see behind me, and also the subway tile on the other two walls, they are thick enough, the tiles are thick enough to cover that expansion and contraction joint. And then when you're done setting the tile, you can actually use a flexible silicone, 100% silicone between the wall tile and the shower pan tile. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. As you probably know, one of the most critical concepts with a mosaic is to make sure that when you set this, you can't see the intersection between the different sheets. They should all become one cohesive, monolithic looking piece of tile in the shower pan. So it's very, very important that when you set these tiles, that you actually bond them such that you can't see the lines between the sheets. And that actually happens whenever you first do a dry layout. So we like doing a dry layout first, then we apply our thin set mortar, and then we bond all of our dry laid out mosaic sheets such that you can't see the lines between them. But yet, you leave that 1 8 expansion and contraction joint between the walls and the curb. So what's one of the best tools to use for a penny mosaic? Well, it's these tile nippers. These are Montelite's tile nippers, and they're probably one of the most premier tile nippers that you can get for a penny mosaic or glass, really any type of tile. Yes, they're a little bit more money than what you'll have to spend in a home store, but if you're doing any type of serious tile work and you don't want to be frustrated with cutting penny mosaics or other tiles, definitely check out Montelite's Tile Nippers. This is not a sponsored video or anything. We used these for this project and they were phenomenal because we actually had to cut half moon shapes around the shower drain. So this is one of those tools that you definitely should check out if you're cutting penny mosaics. Now here's a hot tip and it is you want your penny mosaics to be slightly higher, just slightly higher, let's say like 130, 132nd of an inch above the shower drain. That way all of the water will drain down into the drain and not puddle around the perimeter of it. So again, that's a hot tip. You want your tiles to be just a little bit higher, 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch above the shower drain itself. This is a no brainer. You should also be cleaning the top of the tiles as you set them. And you can use a little paintbrush in between the penny mosaics to clean any of the thin set out from between the penny mosaic tiles. Mosaic tiles look awesome and curved or curbless showers, but remember the big tip before you start your project is to inspect the back of the tile to make sure the mesh is in covered in glue. So hopefully you like the tips in this video. Give us a thumbs up if that's the case. And if you're installing or building a custom shower, definitely check out bathroomrepairtutor.com. You'll love the videos over there. I have no doubt they'll help you out with your project. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care.